On June 21, 1994, a Spanish man by the name of Jose Martin was out for a drive with his wife when he got definitive proof that the universe doesn't like him, or at least doesn't like his car. How? Well, it dropped a nearly two kilogram hunk of space rock that just moments ago had been traveling at several thousand miles per hour right through his windshield. Fortunately for Martin and his wife, the meteorite hit the dashboard instead of them and then ricocheted into the back seat. Fortunately for the humans inside, the only injury was a broken finger which was suffered by Martin, an injury we speculate he sustained while flipping off the sky as hard as humanly possible. According to a later report, authorities were initially hesitant to believe that Martin had been run off the road by a rogue chunk of stone from the heavens. But upon further investigation, among other evidence in favor of Martin having told the truth about how his car got smashed up was a reported 200 kilograms of other meteorites in the general area, suggesting that this was just a small piece of a much larger meteorite that had broken up in the Earth's atmosphere, as meteorites are wont to do. The same can't be said of another car the universe decided to express ire against, a 1980 Chevy Malibu owned by an 18-year-old girl named Michelle Knapp. Knapp had just recently purchased the car from her grandmother for $400 when, on October 9, 1992, she was sitting in her parents' house in Peekskill, New York, watching TV, and heard what sounded like a car crash outside. Upon going out to investigate, she found that the rear right of her car had been smashed in, with a large hole through the smashed area. Directly under that spot of the car was a bowling ball-sized meteorite. Initially, she did not recognize this fact and just called the police, who determined it was an act of vandalism. However, upon slightly more educated investigation, the object that struck the car was determined to be a meteorite that had probably been traveling around 200 miles per hour, that's 320 kilometers per hour at the time it hit. There is no word on whether the officers in question then attempted to arrest the universe for its blatant and unapologetic act of vandalism. While initially perturbed about the damage to her car, especially after her insurance company refused to pay, deeming the damage been caused by an act of God, the whole thing, well, it worked out for Knapp in the end. The Knapp sold the meteorite for $69,000, which is about $120,000 today, and even made a tidy profit on the car too, selling it as a curio to one Iris Lang for a reported $10,000, which is about $17,000 today. The car still occasionally gets shown around at various museums, along with pieces of the meteorite that struck it. In fact, in 2012, the broken tail light from the struck Chevy was sold for $5,000 because apparently some people just have far too much money. And this all reminds us of one of our favorite eBay facts, and that's that one of the first items sold on eBay after its launch in September of 1995 was a broken laser pointer. When the founder of eBay emailed the person who bought the broken laser pointer for $14.83, that's $22.40 today, to make sure he knew it was broken, the man told him, I'm a collector of broken laser pointers. In any event, perhaps the unluckiest person to be on the receiving end of a merciless meteorite attack is one Anne Hodges. While it's probably happened many times before in the vast history of humanity, she is the first definitively proven person to have ever been hit by a meteorite. The event happened in 1954 when the 31-year-old Hodges was napping in the living room of her home. It's at this point we'd like to point out that Hodges lived across the street from the Comet Drive-In. Clearly, the universe couldn't ignore such an opportunity for sweet, sweet irony. The meteorite fragment that struck Hodges weighed approximately 8.5 pounds, that's 4 kilograms, and first hit the roof of her home, breaking through the roofing material and boards. It then nicked a rafter and busted a hole in the three-quarter-inch wooden ceiling of their living room. Not done with its little ramp page then struck a radio and bounced off and hit the sleeping Hodges in the hip and on her arm. Luckily, she did have some padding in the form of two thick quilts which were draped over herself. When she was first struck, Hodges didn't actually realize what was happening and jumped up thinking that there had been some sort of explosion in the house. After seeing the rock, though, and feeling the pain in her hip and on her arm, she called the police and subsequently spent the day in hospital. The police initially thought the rock was just a bit of burnt limestone that was common in the area. Eventually, a geologist determined that it was likely a meteor, a fact that was later confirmed after the U.S. Air Force confiscated the meteor for further testing. Anne Hodges' husband wanted the meteor for himself to sell. The landlord also wanted to sell it so he could pay for the damage to the house. In the end, after a lot of arguing, Anne decided to donate it to the Alabama Museum of Natural History. And now for some bonus facts. It's possible many humans have been killed by meteorites over the millennia, though this is more or less impossible to determine definitively, even when detailed accounts are given. For example, among the potentially most deadly of such events is the 1490 Qingyang event, where, to quote one contemporary description, 
Stones fell like rain in the Qing Yang district. The larger ones were 4 to 5 catties, about 1.5 kilograms, and the smaller ones were 2 to 3 catties, about 1 kilogram. Numerous stones rained in Qing Yang. Their sizes were all different. The larger ones were like goose's eggs, and the smaller ones were like water chestnuts. More than 10,000 people were struck dead. All of the people in the city fled to other places. A much more recent 1908 event could have been even more deadly had it happened near a populated area, but instead it occurred in Siberia. Indeed, this event only resulted in two unconfirmed deaths. Known as the Tunguska event, the estimated 15 megaton explosion knocked over about 80 million trees in a 1,300 square mile or 3,400 square kilometer area, forming a butterfly shape pattern. For reference here, the blast was about a thousand times more powerful than the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima and about a third as powerful as the largest nuke ever detonated, the Saar bomber. After investigation, it was determined that the object must have been around 30 to 40 meters across, that's 120 feet, and must have been traveling around 30 to 40,000 miles per hour, which is about 55 to 65,000 kilometers an hour. As it traveled through the atmosphere, the air around it heated up to as much as 50,000 degrees Fahrenheit, about 28,000 degrees Celsius, ultimately causing it to annihilate itself around 5 miles, 8 kilometers, above the Earth's surface in a fiery blast. This caused all of the curious destruction and left behind no crater. It wasn't until nuclear testing started happening that these same blast patterns would be observed again, including the stripping of trees around ground zero, with the other trees being blasted down. What's happening here is that the shockwave travels so fast there is insufficient time for the branches to transfer the force to the main part of the tree that they are being ripped off from. For those trees in the epicenter, the force is all downward, so the result is mostly that the branches and bark will get stripped, but many of the trees, they remain standing. Outside of the epicenter, the shockwave hits the trees at more of a horizontal angle, so it flattens them. Eventually, Soviet experiments were able to mimic the butterfly blast pattern with a model forest and small charges. From this, they discovered that the blast in the Tunguska event must have occurred with the blasting body approaching at around a 30 degree angle from the ground and 115 degrees from the north. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below. Don't forget to subscribe. Brand new videos just like this every day of the week. And if you're looking for something else to listen to right now, why not check out our podcast? It's called Brain Food. It's kind of stuff like this, but in the audio format. A bit more discussion based, a little bit longer form. You can check that out through the link in the description below. And as always, thank you for watching.